Well, in 1956 and so on, for reasons which I will not go into because I'm going too slowly, uh, these two theoretical physicists raised the question, especially with these symmetries, they said, it may be that for certain uh, laws of physics, there's the symmetry works. For example, gravity. Here's the law of physics is the law of gravity. So uh, if I change, uh, if I reflect any experiment that has to do with gravity in a mirror, I'll get the same results. And that seems to have been checked accurately and precisely. Same thing with the properties of matter and antimatter, a transition uh, of this kind uh, would, would, uh, would look, the, the mirror image would behave in exactly the same way. And so on. The issue they examined is what if, what if uh, I have a particle which is radioactive? Because they were interested in the weak force. We know we have four forces, like gravity, strong force, electromagnetic force, and the weak force. The weak force gives rise to radioactivity. And they were interested in whether radioactivity obeys symmetry principles. We know about gravity and so on. So let's concentrate now on this one particular symmetry, which is mirror symmetry. And let's ask the question. Suppose we do all these experiments with gravity. Let's remember Galileo rolling something down an inclined plane and getting s equals 1 half a t. Suppose you watch that in the mirror, you get the same equations. That seems to work for almost any gravity, any gravity force you can try to test. That works. What about electricity and magnetism? Well, we know about electrons around protons. That makes an atom. So if I have an atom that tests the laws of electricity and magnetism, uh, does the same thing happen in the mirror? Yes. The mirror has atoms, and they behave exactly the same way, so that the laws of electricity and magnetism seem to be OK. But what about, I want to skip some of this, what about uh, a radioactive thing? So that's the thing we want to discuss. So first, let's review the mirror properties again. We already mentioned this. Here we have a big mirror, and here we have a person. He raises his right hand, and you see that the mirror is raising the left hand. That's the handedness problem. It doesn't mean that the laws of physics in the mirror are different. And as we said, we're trying to find this out. The fancy word for mirror symmetry is called parity. And don't ask me why. But parity is equivalent to mirror symmetry. And uh, mirror symmetry says that the mirror world is just as valid as the real world and that there's no way by any, any objective way that you could prove that, um, that you're looking at the mirror world or the real world. It is true that a left-handed screw changes to a right-handed screw, but we have left-handed screws in our, in our world and, and in the mirror world, too. Okay. Now, back in, this is almost 50 years ago, plus or minus a few months, uh, I was a professor at Columbia University at that time. Nearby, there was the Brookhaven National Laboratory. And it was there in the summer of 56, in fact, that these two guys studying some data on the, on the decay of particles came to a bizarre conclusion. He, they said that the only way we could understand some of the data is to assume that the world in the mirror is different from the world, the real world. The real world and the mirror world have different laws of physics. They wrote a paper, The Question of Parity Conservation in Weak Interactions. That's, that's the key idea. That's the weak force. And they listed lots of examples uh, of how you might check this idea. <laughs> okay, so we already uh, mentioned the uh, the uh, the fact that uh, again a test of handedness is a good test, and here's the uh, right-handed screw, here's the left-handed screw. But since the left-handed screw is certainly doesn't violate any law of physics, 
uh, it's not a test of parity because we do have left-handed screws. You just ask the shop for a left-handed screw and you replicate the laws of physics in this way. Well, one of the experiments that um, Li and Yang proposed was carried out by Professor C.S. Wu, an experimental physicist at Columbia, using a radioactive substance, cobalt-60. Well, here's cobalt-60. Suppose, by a very complicated scheme, which we won't discuss in any detail, this cobalt-60 nucleus is spinning, just like a top. It's spinning like a top, and then we always use our right hand, and we say if the fingers curl in the direction of the spin, the thumb points in, uh, 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 in what we'll define as the direction of spin. In other words, the spin will be defined by your right hand by an axis like this. So here's cobalt 60 spinning, and then if you look at the mirror image of the cobalt 60, it's spinning as this one looks this way, this one is is mirror image, and therefore the spin is in the opposite direction. So the mirror reverses the direction of spin. So what? Okay. Everything is fine. There's no, nothing wrong because these two are identical systems. One is the other one upside down. Just turn it upside down, and the, this cobalt 60 is the same as this. But suppose this cobalt 60 is radioactive and shoots off an electron. If it shoots off an electron, then the question is, where does the electron go? Well, you have to consider it shoots off lots of electrons and you measure the directions of those electrons. And just suppose that it was discovered that many more electrons come off in the direction of the spin as come off in the opposite direction. Why? Don't ask me why. It just That's nature, that the electrons coming off from a spinning cobalt like to go in the direction of the spin. Now you have a parity problem because here the electrons are going up. The mirror image electron should also go up. That's the mirror image. Instead, the mirror image electrons, the, the real cobalt will have the electrons going in this direction if that's the way nature is. Nature says electrons go in the direction of the spin. And uh, so this cobalt couldn't exist because we know that cobalt 60 electrons go in a direction of spin. The direction of spin is changed by the mirror, but the direction, that's, we understand that, but the, the electrons direction you can't change in the mirror. So proving that more electrons come off in the direction of spin than come off in the opposite direction would show you that the mirror world is different from the real world. This is a little complicated, and so I want to uh, give you the experiment we did in 36 hours. 